Have you ever got excited about something and then just rushed out and purchased it without doing quite as much research as you should have? I have. I definitely did on this project. Today I'm going to talk about engine adapters and what not to buy and what to buy. This is Project Special Reserve and you're watching 2DRX4 on YouTube. So before we do anything else, I want to point out something that I forgot to mention in the last video, and it's super critical. When you take this Mercedes flywheel off, you have to match mark it. They're not neutral balance. They are balanced at final assembly with the rotating assembly. So you want to preserve that balance. And that's going to cause us some problems later, but there is solutions for that. With that out of the way, I'll just get right into the whole subject of this video, which is the actual engine to transmission adapter. Initially, I purchased this one. This is the Mercedes diesel 4x4 kit for going from the OM617 to the AX15. This seemed to be the most commonly used adapter out there. It was the only one that was really available at the time too. And it seemed like guys had some success with it. I'll admit I didn't do as much research as I should have. However, as soon as I got it and actually realized how it was built, how it works, I became very suspicious of it and did a ton more research and found all sorts of horror stories about failures that this adapter caused. And I'm talking things from taking out the clutch to the transmission to even the engine itself. And that does not sit well with me. Taking a quick look at the adapter plate itself, you can see that it is pickled in oil steel and it's been plasma cut. Plasma cutting is a great economical method of cutting large parts out. However, it does not have the definition or the tolerance to cut important small details such as these dowel holes. And because of that, there is a very distinct chance that this plate will wind up not being concentric, which means that the input shaft of the transmission will not actually be aligned symmetrically with the crank. This is what probably causes a lot of failures associated with this. Another glaring issue with this adapter plate is that it's the wrong thickness. Now you can say that it's actually not the issue and it would be the crank flange that's the wrong thickness. I would argue that it's the plate because you could not actually make this thinner and have it survive. So because it's too thin, it actually means the transmission is pulled forward, which means that the flywheel is essentially pushed back. This is about a distance of an eighth of an inch or 125 thou, which for something like this, that's, that's a huge distance. That's not even close. That's not even ballpark. At the very least, it means that the starter will not engage the ring gear correctly. More likely, it's going to give you all sorts of clutch problems. Jeep clutches are somewhat problematic and finickety to begin with. If you're going to go and do that, you're just asking to fight with it for the entire rest of eternity. As far as the actual crank adapter flange goes, they did a beautiful job of machining this and you have to give it to them for that. But that said, the design is absolutely terrible. The first thing was they eliminated half of the flywheel bolts for the bolting it to the actual Mercedes crank flange. There should be 12 and there's six of them. They did that because they had a interference issue with the Jeep flywheel bolt pattern that they drilled into this. Now, that said, it probably wouldn't be a big deal. 12 is likely completely overkill for the power level that you're ever gonna get out of this engine. But, they went and made sure that this would be a problem by installing these bolts in a manner that they're just not going to survive. What happens here is that the Jeep flywheel goes on top of this and then you drill through it and bolt through into the crank flange. Because these bolt holes have no edge distance whatsoever on the center bore of this, it means that when those bolts go in, because this is not the same height as the thickness of the flywheel, only part of the bolt head is actually supported. Basically, they're all unevenly loaded. You might get away with that sort of a glaring installation error in certain areas, but you're not going to get away with it on a flywheel. It just isn't gonna happen. Those bolts see massive shock loading and vibration, and that will make them come loose, and the instant they come loose, they will snap. 
Another issue with the crank adapter is that they used a pilot bushing rather than a pilot bearing. Pilot bushings were common up until the early 80s. It was more or less how it was done. At that time, clutch life, they, well, they just didn't last that long. Clutch might go 60,000 miles sort of thing. And this bushing would last about the same. So if you're in there, no big deal. You're going to change it anyways. However, with modern clutches, they last far longer than that. And this will wear out before the clutch does then, which is going to give you all sorts of problems. So we're about at the end of my gripes with this. The last thing, or last two things, is that the hardware, it's junk. This is cheapest grade five stuff you can get. Plain nuts, not even like a nylock, not a not a stove or a distorting thread lock nut or anything like that. You know, like the difference in price is pennies. Get me some decent grade eight stuff. Get me some stovers. Get me some real hardened washers. It, it costs so little, but it makes a huge difference. I would never install this stuff. It's junk. And likewise with the junk, here's the instructions. Out of all of this, there's a couple of grainy pictures of how to grind the oil pan. The reality is we live in a world where you can take pictures for nothing. Every phone out there has a camera built into it that will take better pictures than these. Take some decent pictures and include them. It helps. It's appreciated. That's, do I sound like I'm ranting? I am. Because this is unacceptable. However, it's the quality of work that you're going to get if you buy from Mercedes diesel 4x4. Luckily, or perhaps a little bit unfortunately, shortly after I purchased my Mercedes diesel 4x4 kit, another company who also has experience building these adapters, Doomsday Diesel, announced that they were planning to build a kit. And I wish that I'd just got this kit to start with, but it wasn't on the market at the time. And then I kind of held off because I wanted to let him get through the alpha and beta testing phases before I got into it. And so far, there's a bunch of these out there and they seem to be performing really, really well. And just looking at it, I can tell you hands down, this is the better solution. This is something that will work. So looking at the Doomsday Diesel Kit versus the Mercedes Diesel 4x4 Kit, the first and most obvious difference is the adapter plate itself. The Doomsday Diesel Kit, it's made out of aluminum. This is a 5 8 inch thick piece of 6061, and it's been cut out as far as the rough outside and inside dimensions with a water jet. However, the dimensions that really matter, being these dowel holes, have all been cut using a mill, so you know that they're exactly where they should be. Likewise, because this is thicker, it works with their crank adapter to actually space the flywheel to the correct depth. The other complication of this is that the factory cheap application used a dust shield underneath the starter, which shims the starter out. With the Doomsday Kit, a shim has been provided, which acts also as a dust shield to close off the hole for the starter out of the adapter plate. This ensures that the starter will engage the, the flywheel correctly and your clutch should work fine. The crank adapter provided with the Doomsday Diesel Kit is also extremely well machined. However, unlike the Mercedes Diesel Kit, it retains all 12 of the factory flywheel retention bolts. These bolts actually aren't the factory ones. They gotta be shorter, so ARP Pro Quality Fasteners are provided. So it's definitely something that you're not going to worry about a failure in this area. Outside of that 12 bolt circle, there's a new six bolt pattern that's been drilled. It's been moved out a bit over what the factory Jeep flywheel pattern is, just so that there's adequate edge distance in all these holes. That means you will need a custom flywheel. One is provided with the kit. However, if you needed one down the road and could not source one from Doomsday for whatever reason, it's a fairly easy modification, but a mill is required to surface it correctly. The other nice thing about this crank adapter is it's bored out for a factory pilot bearing. No one-off custom bushing required. This adapter is also a two-piece design. This is more or less a necessity just because of where all the bolt holes and center bore diameters line up. Second piece is basically a shim, and when installed over top of the first piece, it will locate the flywheel correctly. And as to the flywheel itself, it's just a basic stock HO flywheel. However, the six bolt pattern has been drilled into it, and the slight complication is that the area around those bolt holes had to be milled flat to ensure that the bolt head would seat correctly. Also provided with the kit is the hardware that you would need to assemble it. And this is all good quality stuff. We've got grade eight bolts. We've got 10-9 metric 
countersunk screws. We have Air P Pro quality bolts for the, the flywheel and crank adapter. And really my only gripe here was that a set of Jeep dowels wasn't included with it. You can't really easily get them out of the engine and reuse them. They tend to distort if you do that. It's just not worth doing. So a new set would be nice, but it's easy to go get them from the dealer. They're under $20. So that's it for this episode. I know this one was a little bit shorter and it was really dry. It had to happen though. I had to get this info out there for the people that are actually interested in pursuing this swap. I want them to be informed one way or another. You can make your own choice based on what I said and what else you read on the internet, but it has to be out there. For the people that aren't interested or aren't doing this swap, and if you made it through, well, I thank you so much. For those that bailed, I fully understand, and hopefully I'll see everybody back on the next episode.